So um, we've uh, we've reviewed a mountain of albums in uh, 2021. Um, easily over a hundred albums on the uh, the website and our, our YouTube channel. Um, but there was there was one name that seemed to come up <laughs> on almost every second review that we did. Um, so much so that it became a bit of a, a running joke as to um, how this guy actually manages to find time to sleep um, or or masturbate, as Duncan said in a previous <laughs> review. Um, so yeah. for because uh, it's one it's one or the other, isn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> for so for our, our final podcast of 2021, uh, we thought it was only right that we get the man in question on the show to find out exactly. Not heavy masturbates. Please don't finish that that way. Please don't finish that way. So he's going to be joining us. uh, (laughs) But like the the, the joke just now is like the the joke that we've been saying is like it like kind of feels like I've been calling it the full boat right. Um, Like it's a poker move, you know what I mean? Like instead, like a full house, you've got a full boat right because it is legitimately. Dave, you will finish your introduction in a second. That's all right. it's no review without me jumping in first. No. Um, but like le- legitimately, it's been almost like a seal of of quality and interest. Because I don't read the press stuff. I'm te- I'd like I just don't read it at all. So I just go and blind and Dave will like name the album. They were like, "This is the band. This is where they're from." And he's like, "Oh yeah." And uh, Brad Boat right? And I'm like, "Oh right now, now <laughs> things. It's all coming together. It's all coming together." So with that in mind, Dave, thank you. You can finish your introduction now. <laughs> Um, yeah, so join us as Brad Boatwright on uh, on the podcast. Um, how are you doing this evening, Brad? I'm doing great. It's, great. Uh, yeah, doing great. Good to have you. Kind of light, Good to have you on the show. Scheduled day today, so um, <laughs> it's. I think it's rainy outside. Like I said earlier, I don't have any windows in here. So again, I apologize for the lighting. And uh, ah, sorry. <laughs> so are you um, is it Portland? You're you're based in. It is. Yeah, yeah, Portland. Yeah. So, um, sell the argument here: is it Oregon or Oregon? <laughs> well, that's an what? argument here as well. All right, <laughs> it's, it's Oregon. You know, I, like, yeah. I mean, growing up, like, I we played like the Oregon Trail game and everything. And I yeah. always heard Oregon. I then I moved out here because I grew up in the South, and I moved out here, and all of a sudden, like, you know, there was this thing like if you said Oregon, Oregon, yeah. It was like a big no-no, but I was like, I've never heard anybody say Oregon, so I don't know. I think that's just something like uh, people. Between I'm just going to copy you if that's then. okay from now on. I'm just going to see Brad told me this is how it's this is how it's pronounced. And <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's it. totally fine. That's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. I, I was. I think um... that like actually, it's kind of funny because like I really think that like a lot of the misspellings between or not misspellings, but different spellings that like between you know. English in the UK and English over here. I, I kind of think that a lot of those are from people who like got it wrong and were like, yeah. no, that's just, that's how we <laughs> fucking do it here, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's what we do. That's right. That's right. I'm just going to skip gonna all of that still call it the PNW. Just. Or no, I yeah. Yeah. Cool. How how is um is Oregon just now? Is it is it still are you guys fairly locked down where you are or is it is it can it ease up any? Yeah, I mean there's still like a mask mandate. There's still it seems like it's getting better. Um uh, everybody's getting their booster shots. I just got mine last week. Um so you know, I think as as that starts like they've already lifted the mask mandate and everything once and then mm-hmm like COVID cases started spiking again and they brought it back. So, uh, you know, it's this time, I think they're being a little more conservative and a little more cautious with, with lifting it. So I'm ready, but I'm just thinking about it. It's, I mean, we're going on two years, so. Yeah. 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 But yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it's pretty much the same here, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Duncan and I are in Scotland, uh, Kyle's in Norway, but I think Norway, they just went back into another lockdown as well. Kyle, is that right? Partial lockdown, yeah. Partial. It's uh, we've got uh, mandatory masks and sit a meter or two between people if you can, and if you can't, then uh, just try not to get the COVID. Yeah, <laughs> I not get the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> not like that, not like that. Uh, <laughs> and it's, like, it's scary. It's scary stuff too. It's scary because like 
not only is it scary in that like nature always finds a way, but it's mm-hmm. scary in that like it really brings out the like over here like I mean and worldwide, but I think it's brought out the worst in in the polarized politics of people. Like they, they yeah. will just yeah. inject that into any personal part of their lives, mm-hmm. including their health. You know, mm-hmm. and it, for like they'll find any excuse. It's it's really disgusting. Um, so I try not to. I try to avoid <laughs> you know too much of the news and, and things because because I start losing my faith in humanity. You know, yeah. like. Yeah, the flip side though, if you're an artist, plenty to write about. Um, like we, we were <laughs> yeah. talking about this, we were like, like, yeah, if you've been locked down for like a year and a half, um, and you're in the, the the business that you're in, and all these bands are, you know, either forced to stay at home, or you know, you know, separated apart, but have the technology readily available to write, record, send stuff over, jam, practice. Um, is that why you've had like is this just a regular year for you in terms of album releases that we just didn't notice before that this is how busy you are or is this a case of no it just so happens that covid has you know and a lot of we streamlined a lot of bands to just doing a lot of music so i've just been busy because of that you know it like last year it really when it first hit there was about six months where it was really up and down and where like mm-hmm. There was a lot of cancellations. There were a lot of people who like, you know, they weren't going on tour and things like that. And so like, you know, when you're not going on tour and you don't have, you're you're not planning on going out and selling records or you're going on tour to record, then, you know, your plans change. Um, But there were, there was an abundance of, you know, projects that people had been working on that had kind of been shelved or like reissues and things like that. Um, And then this year has been pretty busy pretty good it's still been kind of up and down and sporadic but like i don't think that the pandemic has really made it go one way or the other i think if it's if anything it's just made my output a tiny bit less so um you know and like a, a, i think a lot of records that came out this year too like i mastered last year or even the year before right. yeah um so yeah it's it's kind of up and down but to be honest like I'm kind of enjoying having some holes in the schedule because it allows me time to work on, you know, projects around here um, or, you know, spend time with my family, things like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for just like for a bit of background for, for people listening, um, you obviously started Audio Siege back about 2010. Um, yeah, I believe it was 20, 2010. Right then. Yeah. Um, but before that, you obviously you've, you played in bands and were a, a, a touring musician. Mm-hmm. Um, but was was it always the plan to kind of get into music production, or had had you already kind of started doing a bit of that when you were playing in bands? Yeah, it was it was kind of always the plan, and then I tumbled my way into it. So, um, I really like you know from the first time I like my band recorded to a four track, or like actually uh, like beyond like even earlier than that, like when I first started playing guitar, and I wanted to like like I had this like little Casio keyboard. And I would put it on the the country beat, which was you know, a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And but if you like, if you sped the tempo all the way up, you'd get. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so like, <laughs> so I would sit and I'd write like you know like grindcore kind of stuff, <laughs> and riffs, and <laughs> you know. And so I was thinking like, how am I going to record my guitar over that? And like, I was with my dad one time and like we were at like one of these surplus stores and they had like a karaoke machine and Mm -hmm. i'm like you know i bet you i could like take i I could tape the the keyboard the drums you know the (laughs) and put that on a tape and then mic my little guitar amp while playing that back and then Mm -hmm. make myself a little little demo of songs that i was writing (laughs) it worked i mean uh, it didn't work all that great but it worked and then Mm -hmm. you know that was like what you know over to two track i guess so like and then like recording um you know recording the four track with a band i remember a band that i was in back in mississippi like actually we didn't record there well we recorded at easily studios in memphis which was quite an experience that was really cool and then um another like this punk band from mississippi called atomic jefferson was 
recording in town at Fat Possum Records with, or mm -hmm. recording, which is a fairly sizable label now. Like they're they've released a lot of like really classic blues and and things like that. Um, I think they were purchased by Epitaph or they were like they had a distrib right. distribution nice. deal with Epitaph. But like back then they were just, you know, a small town label in my hometown and the guy had a recording studio and it was just cool kind of seeing all the tricks that were involved with that. Um, mm. And then I left high school and wanted to get out of the out of the state and, you know, had a had an opportunity to go to school for it. Um, and then met everybody in my band at school, with the exception of, of John, our guitar player, who um, was also from Mississippi. And I'm, so, well, actually, I didn't meet everybody in the band from school or in the band at school. I met them you know, like from living in Nashville when I moved to Nashville mm -hmm. to school. Um, and then, yeah, just started going on tour and recording, looking over people's shoulders, asking annoying questions and a lot of trial and error, <laughs> you know. What's that button do? Oh, you're asking a question now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, you know, I, I found that as long as like the most annoying thing you can ask a, an engineer when you're in this recording studio is, hey, can you can you play my solo back or because they're never working on what you want to hear right? <laughs> like, I, fuck off i'm listening to the snare right <laughs> in terms of so like like you obviously you come from you come from a, a background specifically in in the the kind of the harsher sound of music anyway um in terms of when you transition to recording was that like they were saying about was your your kind of your goal to end up recording but was it specifically to do that genre of music because when i was working back through um some of the the, the stuff that you've worked on it's an eclectic mix i mean there's everything from like anyone that's watched stranger things um like, that, like even to to see that you've worked on uh, on the stuff that came out for the, the theme um which is obviously huge and everyone knows it um but like it, is it a case of that you've kind of diversified over time or was it just a case of, you know, I will take work where it's available uh, regardless of genre? Well, like my record collection for one is pretty diverse and like nice. the music that I listen to is pretty diverse. So that's the starting point right there that like I'll listen to anything from Napalm Death to Neil Young, right? And like so... <laughs> So there's already that like in my floating around in my head and you know, the sound is sound and like, regardless of whether it's like an extreme music or like an, uh, a heavy aggressive recording or like a very airy spacious recording, I'm, I'm fascinated by, by music and by sound. And my background in playing music is obviously with the heavier aggressive stuff with punk and, and hardcore and metal and stuff like that. So naturally those, bands have gravitated towards yeah. me as a mastering engineer and that's great but at the end of the day for me it's all transient content and tonal transient and tonal content right like it's there's there's frequencies and 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 transients and sounds there that i'm working with that are all quite the same when you get down to the level at which i'm working on them mm -hmm. you know um but it does take a knowledge, I think, of different types of music to be able to, you know, take that approach with things. Mm. So, um, you know, if, if I'm only mastering, if I only know how to master heavy music, I'm I'm probably not going to be that great at my first shot on something like, yeah. you know, something folky or something. Um, but actually, I really I think I'm at my best when I'm out of my element and when it's like something a little more airy or like like the stranger things stuff for for example mm -hmm. that was a lot of fun for me because mm -hmm. it's all you know it's all very like it's all electronic you know synthesizer stuff that like there's no drummer in in the room mm -hmm. you know there's like it's just fun like it's 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 totally out of my out of my element there I mean, I mastered a David Crosby tinnage and, you know, it was like, <laughs> like, this is awesome. Like, this is cool. And so, yeah. so yeah, like, I, I don't purposely like target the heavy music crowd. I think it's, I think it's something that I, I'm really, really good at is mastering mm -hmm. heavy music. And I, and, 
but I, I think that I'm equally as good at mastering music that's not of that of that type, you know. Yeah. Your um the the stuff like that you've been working on um for twenty twenty one basically. I mean it looks like my end of year list to be honest. Yeah, it's a lot um, a lot of it's on my end of year list. <laughs> <laughs> um you know, just like to, to name a few of the, the kind of highlights for, for me, bands like two hundred stab wounds, um Frontier and Anti Ritual, um, ARES, we just reviewed just three or four weeks oh, ago. That album, by the way. Oh. Superb. Um, People Slicer as well. Kyle's a big People Slicer fan. Um, yeah. What was the other one we, we killed at um, LLNN? It was Un LLNN. Yes. Oh, that was oh man. That yeah. is just. I couldn't make that, that with you, and that album is the tits. It is. So <laughs> good. <laughs> so yeah. good. Um, uh, and the, the Danish band, obviously, that, that, that we can't pronounce. <laughs> uh, well, you uh, can't pronounce. We can Newt, pronounce. Newt Liv? Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. See, Brad, yeah, that's the one. See, Brad can pronounce it. Dave. Why can't you? <laughs> Just me. <laughs> I, there's quite a lot of Danish bands that I've I've had over the past. I mean, actually, over the past few years because of my relationship with um, Jakob Bredal from Dead Rat Studio and yeah. Um, yeah. Arhus, and like he's like I work very closely with him, and he's become a very good friend over the years. And so, you know. We go back and forth on a lot of that stuff, and it's crazy. Yeah. We're, we're moderately obsessed with that guy on this show. <laughs> yeah. uh, we we saw He's awesome. we saw him. Yeah. Uh, we saw him. Um, he played. He played with his his old band Hate Sphere, opening oh. for Gojira in arguably the best venue in Glasgow, which is uh, King Tut's Wawa Hut, and um, it's the best gig that I've ever been to. <laughs> and Dave's a tall guy. Like Dave on this show is like six. Six three six four, yeah. and as a small man <laughs> beside Jacob, Jacob is absolutely huge. Yeah. But yeah. I've loved his transition from because that, that, that was a, I loved his like style of vocals. I thought it was it was great. And when he transitioned away from doing Hate Sphere uh, and started working on things like the Candidate, I mean that was that was cool. But as soon as he started getting involved with the the kind of production side of things, it's been it's been a real joy because he's yeah. he's very 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 good at it. He's got a very, a very good ear. For yeah. bands like that, like a bands come in organically sounding, and it's been it's been a pleasure to listen to that. So yeah, just keep working with him and keep doing the stuff you're doing because we love it. So <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean I've God I've done, I mean I've done a lot of of work with him over the years, mm -hmm. and it's always fun, and we always like, it's one of those, and there, I have a lot of engineers that I work this way with, where it's 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 a team kind of approach, right? Like where we're both like going back and forth he might tweak something i might tweak something and we're going back and forth and man the all the records that i do with him always just come out sounding so great and, and he deserves the credit for those like you know like it's it, he makes my job easy like I, but I, I i also like from developing those relationships with people kind of know how to approach their work and what they expect mm -hmm. and we develop communication that, that really benefits the record and and um yeah man life sick is another one life sick is another record mm. that has come out this year that i did with with him mm. um i don't know if you guys have heard that one but yeah dave's dropped the ball on that one because i haven't and if <laughs> this is going to be another one that's going to affect my top 10 list damn you brad boatwright yeah. damn you um <laughs> yeah. honestly like we're in december and stuff still cut like ares came out and i was like this is the end of the year good stuff has to stop coming out now uh, makes our job impossible in a good yeah. way in a good yeah. way obviously yeah uh, in terms of what, like so and for anyone that doesn't know because i imagine most people know the role of a producer right uh, on a like they've seen that they've seen pictures of it they know what that looks like for those that don't know exactly what do you do to a record so a band goes in they record with jacob for example jacob takes those files he sends them to you what do you do so my job is to Put the icing on the cake okay mm -hmm. so my job is to turn a collection of songs into a record into an album or an ep or even just a single to make something translate across different systems for a listener to take care of sometimes issues in the mix that mm -hmm. you know got through the mix and maybe come out on certain systems but don't on others like you know like low-end um swells things like that that mm -hmm. you know if you're listening on earbuds you might not hear them but if you're listening to it in the car it might sound woofy so my my job is varied but it, it usually involves some amount of eq um 
some amount of dynamics processing and occasionally fun stuff like harmonic content distortion and saturation so you know usually it's just very light-handed eq and you know compressing it making it a little bit louder i don't like saying and making it louder that much because it's not really part of what it's a natural outcome with, with yeah. mastering right mm -hmm. like a lot of times i'll make things louder by compressing or, or by e equalizing them so like you know by cutting frequencies that are in the way and getting you know clearing up that bandwidth to make things louder but uh, you know inevitably it is something that that comes from the mastering process so that you know when people are, are listening to a playlist um in their itunes or something they don't go and turn the volume up um when they hear their songs and you know there's yeah. a, a lot of like volume normalization uh, algorithms out there on spotify and youtube and and stuff now that you know makes slamming things to extreme loudness not as important as it was but the loudness wars did teach me kind of how to get things really loud while mm -hmm. retaining dynamics and not trimming the low end down to nothing so mm -hmm. one goal i i like to do is try to make a really loud and this is in regards to, to heavy music is try to make a really loud in your face master that's also dynamic that punches mm -hmm. right that you can feel sometimes i miss the mark sometimes i i, I hit it sometimes it takes me a couple times but that's always kind of been my goal you know like i not to like overly compress something but to make it to eq it in such a way that it's that it's balanced and when you have something balanced like it'll it'll go it'll go loud you know i always equate it to loading a van right like it's when you're loading a van to go on tour if your bass player is going to bring two ampeg svt cabinets then you're going to have less room for other things right like you're going to have your guitar players may not want to may not be able to bring full stacks but if your guitar players bring full stacks mm -hmm. and your drummer's got a double kick and you're still in a 40 corner line band then your bass player might have to go down to a 410 or you know a, a 115 or something so you know it's kind of like that it, it's 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 just figuring out where the pieces fit and and getting them balanced and playing that game of tetris but with 20,000 frequencies <laughs> I can imagine being having done this for as long as you have. You have like a bunch of templates and go-to things, and do you put that in like every record, or you have some things you want to try first, or do you want to? Do you tend to listen to the song and go like, okay, this is what this needs? I, in my opinion, that's a good question. And yes, so workflow is really important to me. So it's important to me because I think that if I just listen to something and then like listen to it and then say, well, let's try this and then listen to it again. And let's try you, it, it becomes fatiguing and you can lose mm. perspective. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. Um, I do kind of have like some starting points, especially for different types of music. And I've got some things that work really well, regardless of the style. So I, you know, when you're dealing with an analog EQ that has, you know, four bands per channel and each one of those bands has a frequency and a volume and a, 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 a bandwidth adjustment it, twisting knobs around can like become time consuming so mm -hmm. you know what i try to do is kind of have like this that sounds good on most of what i use it on with some tweaks here and there right yeah. like if it needs no tweaks if i patch it in and it's it's good then hey awesome but usually like I like to limit those moves. I don't like to start from zero. I like to start where it where it kind of works and it's kind of a balanced sweetening style EQ and I can boost the high shelf just a little bit, mm. um, cut down the low shelf or boost that a little bit, maybe dip something here and there. Um, so yeah, I do kind of have some starting point templates, but they don't really, they're not like presets. They're not like mm. something that's going to drastically change everything when you patch it in it's just kind of my starting point okay that's cool yeah mm. we, i think we, we kind of noticed that when we start obviously we're reviewing albums and then we have a look at you know who's been doing the producing who's been the master and stuff you can tell like the, the albums that you've worked on um they all sound very individual you know they don't really sound like cookie cutter at all or like there's been lots of presets used it's it does sound very kind of unique and um, original to that band um, and that's important. It's, yeah. it's important to me, and I think it's important to the bands. 
Yeah, yeah there's, I think there's nothing worse than um, like the feel of listening to a bunch of albums and it feels like they've all got like an Instagram filter on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they all come out looking exactly, they all come out sounding exactly the same. Mm. That, you know, and I think there, there's a I danger as well that. Example. Yeah, it, it, yeah. <laughs> like this oh, is no. yeah, this is Kyle's realm, by the way. <laughs> this is Kyle's realm. This is his this is his pet peeve this year. Oh. But like, there are there you do get that feeling that when you you listen to and it's it's more prevalent in other genres than you know some. Yeah, <laughs> but what what we found is like you you can start to readily identify specific producers or you know certain individuals that have worked on certain albums because it sends like this like it basically sounds like the same band over and over and over again and one of the things that i think is is kind of the lost art and it's something that certainly we've appreciated from listening to the stuff you worked on is that sense of individuality um we're we're big fans of kurt Ballou, uh for for obvious reasons and the stuff that he's worked on this year in weirdly different fields and they all they all sound like the the bands them the bands themselves have come in and he has managed to catch that sound as opposed to trying to make them sound like he wants them to sound. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think, think that's I think it's huge at, important. Kurt's always been good at that part of it, and I I think that there was a, a a time there where a lot of bands, you know, would come to him and say like, "We want to sound like this last band that you did," or, yeah. or something. And so a lot, of, you know, he had kind of not the same approach, but things ended up for a few years like they would sound similar not in a bad way but that, that's mm. that's what the bands want right like mm. that's what the bands want and like yeah i think he's gotten like i think he's kind of wanted to grow a little more too even though he was kind of already at the the pretty much the pinnacle of, of where he was at i think he's he's really like he's done that in some of the recordings and he, it's it's great like he's really like one of my favorite records that I've done this year is the Bitter Branches album, and that thing sounds like huge and it's roomy. Like the drums are just massive, and it, it it's not like it's not compressed. It's not really aggressive and in your face. It's just a mm. really good sounding recording. Mm. Um, so yeah, like and, and it's a double edged sword as well because I think that some of my favorite recordings from the '60s and '70s like sounded just so great because they knew what worked and mm. you know the music industry the recording industry was just uh, people don't realize how much of a machine it was how it was just like cranking things out like and it there was no time to waste and and uh, you know it, it, you might send led zeppelin up like for to, you know into the hills to work all year on an album but like, i guarantee you the execs at the record studio like companies did not like that one bit mm. it's just <laughs> that they had the power to do that because they were yeah. led zeppelin but like they would bring bands in, you know, Muscle Shoals in Alabama is a good example. They would bring bands in, record them, and they'd have a record. I mean, like they would record them and then the mixing time was was just minimal. It's not like they're, they're like, okay, let's dump everything in and uh, zero the knobs, try this, try this and mix it. They just have the sounds down and they have the chains down and it just you know what you the the variance is mostly in the performance in, in a lot of those records mm -hmm. um same with the uk you know there was like a different uh, kind of historically different eq approach like that that you'll hear engineers talk about between uh, the glory days of the the 70s in in the uk and 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 the us that like you know in the uk they would like they would spend a minimal time amount of time eqing because they would every, everything would be kind of eq'd on the way in and then in the us you know in la and new york they would do a lot of eqing in, in the mix and things so that it's a double-edged sword like there's these there's a cookie cutter approach and then there's just a well-seasoned skillet you know yeah. like yeah yeah and i prefer the well-seasoned skillet because anything you cook in it's going to sound good mm -hmm. or going to going to taste good like, yeah my cornbread sounds great, but yeah. <laughs> only I can hear it. Yeah. I take a similar approach from mixing, so yeah, I totally go. I have like a few like presets, but I'll just sort of make some moves and do that as well. So it's like yeah, I'll start in a place and just 
sort of especially with bass like i record bass and i just record it through a chain because i know that works <laughs> for everything yeah. so it's like i mean if it and works, nobody it listens works. to bass anyway so who gives a fuck right yeah if, if it works <laughs> it works you, it, like we have so many options at our at, uh, at our immediate availability these days that you can you can quickly run into option paralysis mm. you know you ever see a squirrel trying to cross the road and then figure out like oh wait i think i want to turn around no, I'm going to go this way. And then yeah. it's flat. I mean, it's just, you, you, you've got to be quick with your decisions and you've got to know what works. And, and you, it's not like, let's try this. Eh, let's try this. And you, you just make lateral moves and you lose perspective. Mm. In terms of the time that you get to work on, on a project, is that, is that a kind of fluid thing set by yourself or are you kind of essentially given a window to work within? Or is that kind of variable depending on the project? You, you know, I usually ask bands to give me, I think, 48 hours, like two, two to three days, basically. Yeah. To, you know, so if I book a band for nine o'clock in the morning on uh, Tuesday, I'm going to, like I say, like in the booking email to, to please allow, like, you know, up to three days to for the first pass. And the reason for that is because, yes, yeah, sometimes I do need some more time with things or sometimes you've got a record where all the songs are drastically different. and. Yeah they take a lot more work but at the same time I, I have kind of this limit where if I'm if I spend a certain amount of time straight on something that I feel like it's I start running into diminishing returns like I'm not yeah. doing it any good mm -hmm. um, I don't know like if it's I wouldn't put a figure on it but I I know when I'm approaching that point where it's like I'm, I'm spinning my wheels and I need to take a step back. And that's, that's why that's there too, you know, just because sometimes it's best to get a night's sleep and come back and print it. In the morning. Yeah. Totally agree with you there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I read somewhere that you, um, you worked on one of the, the beast milk albums. Is that right? Yep. Was it, um, was it, was it climax? Which, which album was it? Was it was climax. <laughs> that is still to this day one of my favorite albums that I've worked on. And that was that was one of Kurt's like that was a great one that Kurt did. Too. I think that's the one that put him on the map for me as a producer. I like because we we used to write for a, a like a, a kind of previous publication to this, and um, I think it was within our first or second year of doing it that I, I remember hearing uh, "Use Your Deluge" the the EP. And I was like, this is amazing. We're going to get an album of this. This is going to be brilliant. Yeah. And then I distinctly remember ar arriving and Dave getting the, the link for it and saying, you know, be prepared to to change your favorite album for the year. And it was my favorite album of the year. And I, I go back to it like all the time. And it's such an incredible, it, ju it just sounded so different to everything else mm -hmm. out there. But yeah, it's, it's, an, it's an incredible, it's, a, it's just an incredible body of work if you know what i mean just like for an album it just looks so diverse and so captivating and so many textures and layers when you approach something like that um where a band has a sound which seems to be like genuinely melding things that you wouldn't necessarily think would go together like influences like echo and the bunny men through to kind of just straight up punk and when you're bringing those things together um does that, I thought you were saying like you come from different, like you obviously have different interests as well, but how much are you bringing those different ideas from, well, that kind of sounds a little bit like this, that record that I really like, so I bring some of that element in here, but also I'm very conscious that if I do that, it might water down some of the punk aspects, so I need to kind of keep that in mind. Is that a juggling act or is that a case of, well, it's still all sound together and it just comes together? It It can be a juggling act. I think that I think that with mastering, like if I'm heavy handed enough that like that I change something that drastically that mm -hmm. I've probably done something wrong. Yeah, um, yeah. I try to, you know, not necessarily be transparent, but but give the music what it needs. And I think that, you know, like a record like that, it's going to come to me sounding with the vibe that that I need to enhance and not change. Mm -hmm. Um that one was incredibly fun for me because I'm a huge fan of New Model Army. Um, bands like Fields of the Nephilim, Sisters yeah. of Mercy, um, mm -hmm. like you said, Echo and the Bunnymen, UKDK, like like all those old bands, they just, they, and New Model Army especially, like has always had this huge sound that if you break it down, 
the guitar sounds really thin. The bass is like a lot of times playing very high registers and everything on its own sounds kind of, you know, like kind of not weak, but very, very thin and dry. And but the recordings sound huge um, because there's a lot of space there that gets filled out with reverb or with like mm -hmm. synthesizer pads that mm. just lie underneath the music. So. I guess like what I'm trying to say here is like with that, with those kind of things. Yeah. Like it's, it's up to me to bring it out, you know? And I think that there, there are some times where the band isn't really happy with what the mix engineer did and they don't have the ability to recall things and they want something to be changed drastically, but it's, it, it's rare these days. Hmm. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I just try not to fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you find, do you find occasions where, I mean, because you're obviously you're working with like the kind of top level producers now, um, but the other occasions where you are getting something and you're like, I mean, this, this is you know this is going to take time. This isn't going to be easy. Where something comes in and maybe not the the shape that you are accustomed to as a, as a mixing artist. Is that yeah, still something that happens? Yeah. So that's, that's cool. Uh, like uh, yeah, like there's yeah, and again like sometimes i have to check myself sometimes i have to say i don't like the way this sounds but the mm. band is really happy with it the most mm. important thing i can ask a band that i have on my intake form is are you happy with the mix yeah and if i hear something if i put something in and i, I and i am not happy with the mix that's the question that i go back and double check mm. um that being said Sometimes people haven't given something a good enough listen or they've listened in an environment that uh, wasn't very accurate or mm -hmm. they were listening to something with a bunch of plugins on it. And what I got was the mix with the plugins taken off. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. you know, and then sometimes it's just a taste thing. Sometimes, I mean, I, yeah. I do have my own taste with music and my own preferences on, on how things sound. Um, and anybody's going to gradually or naturally lean toward, towards towards making musical decisions based on that. So, yeah, I have to kind of check myself, you know, check my ego at the door with that mm -hmm. or just go in and completely transform it and, you know, run it up the flagpole, see who salutes it. But like <laughs> there's there's been times where I've done that and the band has been like, oh, this is this is exactly what we were what we're going for in times where they're like no we want it to be more like the mix and i'm like you know okay cool um i can do that and still make it translate you yeah. know to, to i can do that and still do my job right mm -hmm. like i can do that and and help them at the same time hmm. yeah do you have a favorite project you've worked on that's come out this year I hate, I hate putting people on the spot. It's like it's like picking your favourite no, you child. Don't. You do that um, all the time. Of course I do. Of course I do. <laughs> of course I do. We, we used to ask a question when we met bands on tour um, and we, we found an advance. It's best to give them the, an advance. We're going to ask you this question because you would say to them, I mean, if you if you if you've been checking out any movies this year, but oh, I've been watching loads on the tour bus, and then you get to that question, you say, "Have you seen a movie you've really liked recently?" And they go, um, uh, I don't, I don't know what I've watched. This, uh, you're like you said, you watched loads of things. Just think of the last thing. Do, do you have like genuinely, from from a personal perspective, um, an album that's come out this year that we might not? The reason I'm asking this is, I thought we had the full boat right, and he's mentioned two releases that I've not heard this year, Dave. And I'm blaming yeah. you for this one. Well, right, is there any yeah. anything that, that you may have worked on this year that may have not crossed the metal epidemic team because we're looking? more in that realm and less elsewhere that we should be checking out all right so i did something before this which was i wrote down a list of just in case you guys were to ask <laughs> See, this usually is i'm this guy's off guard and then later i'm like you know it's like when somebody mouths off to you like in in public or like you know somebody's rude and you're like you get in the car and you're like man that guy was an asshole Fuck! i thought of the perfect thing to say you know like and you just can't like you're, you're like Anyway, yeah. just to avoid that, I did make a list here. So um, the new author and Punisher, which um, I don't know if that's coming out this year or mm. not, but they announced um, that's been all over the Internet the past two days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a phenomenal piece of work um, that 
was another one where I worked really closely with Tristan um, from Author and Punisher and really happy with the way it came out. And I think that you guys, if you're fans of the band, will be in for a really huge treat when you hear it. Mm -hmm. uh, the new Life Sick album, um, I've worked with them a couple times in the past as well. I think this might be the third or maybe even fourth record I've done of theirs. Um, new new Live. <laughs> which is another great one from from denmark um life six also from denmark um this is like the the jakob bredal uh triumvirate here um and then liblus which mm. is great um llnn like you guys mentioned uh anti-ritual from denmark mm. again denmark's really on the map right now um yeah daxma uh band oh, yeah. from here um, that was good yeah they just released a, uh, an album called unmarked boxes which is very great and that's a good example of something that um has the dynamics of really heavy to really soft mm -hmm. you know so, and things like that that you have to really preserve while working on um you know 10 minute songs 15 15 minute songs i think too like but their movements like they're very you know uh, complex like it's they're a fun band to listen to and a fun band to work with mm. um bitter branches like i said um Jean, uh, J-E-E-N from Canada, which is, uh, she's a pop artist from Canada, like a, kind of an indie pop, like stuff like her uh, most recent album came out this year. And that's, mm. she's always fun to work with. And, you know, again, it's because it's kind of out of my normal element of just in your face, heavy stuff. Uh, the new Eris album, Eris mm. from Seattle. Um, yeah. Exile from Sweden, which is uh, my friend, uh, Christopher 138, who was in DS13, very old friend of mine. Uh, his new band, um, was fun to work with. I could keep going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Knox Novacula from, I believe, Seattle. That's another one of those, like, kind of beast milk kind of bands that, like, takes that old, you know, kind of synth spacious pop, or not pop, but like, uh, don't really know what what you'd call it but like you know spacious guitars like um very lots of chorus on the guitars and things like that mm -hmm. um yalcha from mm. nashville tennessee yeah i love that. that yeah one of my favorite one of my favorite bands that i've worked with was beast has been beast wars mm. because like i think that they're the most underrated band in the world <laughs> um beast wars from new zealand and yeah. they have been fun to work with because i discovered them from hearing them on a tv show and then got in touch like i was working just happened to be working on a friend of theirs project and they put me in touch and i ended up working with them over a, a, the course of a few releases um they released one of their album re-released one of their albums this year that was a fun remaster um the armed ultra pop have you guys heard that yeah yeah that one's pretty crazy yeah <laughs> yeah that one it, that was fun um god's hate and regional justice center oh, both yeah. um uh, works good. from taylor young at the pit in mm. southern california another engineer i've probably done i mean I, i'm serious like probably a couple hundred of his recordings <laughs> at this point and he's another person <laughs> that I, I have that rapport with and that like yeah we're a team and we work together. And yeah. so those two um, have been really good. And then the Frontier album that you guys mentioned earlier, yep. um, yeah. that's another good one. Yeah. Well, I, I was looking at your um, like list of like credits for 2021, um, but there was actually, there was a lot of stuff on there that, that I hadn't heard um, at all this year. Um, so I'm now like, I'm, I'm going back and checking out al albums um, that I'm really enjoying from like the, the Rememberables and uh, Dead Heat. I hadn't heard that either. So um, there's there's th these little kind of gems that just kind of come out of nowhere that are kind of flying under the radar. But awesome. Cool. Um, loving those releases yeah. as well. Dead Heat is another one of Taylor's recordings. Uh, the oh, Rememberables. Right, okay. uh, I believe Kurt did that one. So yeah, uh, that's cool. <laughs> Awesome. I can see why I'm I'm drawn to it then. Yeah, it's all <laughs> coming sense. full circle, Dave. It's all <laughs> coming full circle. Um, is, has there is there any bands um, on your radar that you haven't worked with yet that you'd quite like to work with mm. in the future? Anything that comes to mind? Um, you know, like I was, I think the last, the last band that I was like, hey man, like so a really good friend of mine, Greg Daly, um, is a he's a tour manager for bands over here and. He was doing the Napalm Death tour a couple of years mm. ago. I was like, tell them I really want to work with them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? 
Yeah. So like, you know, something like that, like, uh, yeah, I would love to, to work with them. Um, yeah, there's a lot of bands out there that I, I would love to, to work with. I can't really, I don't know. I, I nothing's like coming to mind yeah. right now, but mm. you know, it's like, or maybe I'm just too, too bashful. To, <laughs> to admit, but, yeah. Metallica, Dave. That's what I want to like to. Well, yeah. Yes. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that would, yeah, something like that would be great. Yes. <laughs> you ever had any yeah. genre that's come in and you've been like, no, there's no way I'm doing that? <laughs> no, but I did have, really? um, I did have one time a Christian artist write me oh. from mm -hmm. Portland um, asking about scheduling, mastering, and I directed him to the website and never heard back. <laughs> so, i mean and this like 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 not like just like you know a christian person making yeah. music mm -hmm. it was like specifically a, a christian artist mm -hmm. um no fortunately I, i've been lucky i I've, I've never really had to do that and i don't i my rule is i'm not a music critic you know I, i'm yeah. not here to criticize your music or to judge you or your music i'm here to to work on it for you, mm -hmm. for you, you know, and with you. I, it's, so yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of music that comes in that I'm not a fan of, but mm -hmm. you know, it's not, mm -hmm. I, that's just, it's, it's not, it's not who I am. It, it doesn't apply. It, it's, yeah. You're dividing by zero there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we are obviously we're a matter of uh, weeks away from uh, 2022 um is, is there anything that you can share with us that you are working on for next year for uh, obviously you mentioned uh, author and publisher but anything else that that's due out next year that you've you've done work on um I'd, there's one thing that if i were to share it you might end up reading my obituary in the paper <laughs> um let's see you can tell us that's, that's, that. yeah i was about to say that's the off year comment that's when we hit stop and we never repeat um, it we're all sworn to secrecy and uh you know we, 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 we all become blood brothers um i was gonna say did blood packs work online yes. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah there's a lot of things there's a, yeah. a lot of a lot of stuff on my hard drive right now that is not been has not gotten out there i tell you what though there's somebody out there that like keeps faking email addresses and emailing me asking for like <laughs> like pretending to be from bands that oh. i've worked with and and i have right. been catching them yeah somebody out there i don't know if it's a group of people or just one person who is like obsessed with getting records in advance but like i figured that out because like mm. i got this email claiming to be dylan from full of hell asking <laughs> for a link to their last record and i'm like <laughs> wait what i didn't like i actually didn't master their last <laughs> album my friend adam mastered it and, and so i'm like i'm confused do you need the last one that we did together and he's like no it should be labeled lp5 or something i'm like hmm. huh so i compared the email address and it was just like slightly it, it like instead of like hc it was like hxc uh -huh. and then i called another one there was another one where the guy wrote me and it was something that i hadn't worked on um and then there's been a few that like where I've caught, caught them writing me in, and it's like, nah, dude, I, I just don't even respond. But That's yeah, insane. we were, uh, we were talking about earlier on Dave's put a poll up for people to vote on their uh, favorite album of the year. And he is, uh, he's been a bit more militant this year because last year some indie band recommended their band on it and then just multiple docs the, the the voting on it and became the number one album um so yeah you know that's yeah. okay so like that's what's that's what scientology did with the book dianetics yeah very much <laughs> so that's the, that's the that's that's where you uh, that's what you've yeah. now lumped yourself into when you do that yeah. like that's if, <laughs> Yeah. If there's a sci-fi cult that comes out because of this band, though, I'm going to get worried. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get very, very, very worried. We, um, one of the PR companies that we deal with, um, they had the same issue. So they were they were putting out the uh, uh, Spirit Box album this year, which is obviously oh, well, like yeah. had a lot of buzz about it. Um, they'd released a few singles, even they, from the year before. Like I think mm -hmm. Holy Roller was like 2020 when that came out. Um, 
So they were like, uh, when they were sending it out for review, it was like stream only and they were only sending it to certain kind of publications and stuff. Um, but they said that they'd had like uh, people emailing them saying they were from bands or uh, were in the band looking for a copy of the album. It was just like, why why would you go to that that length to you know you've try got, and get you've your got hands more you've got more luck saying that you're a Nigerian general offering one million pounds <laughs> if you send your bank details <laughs> than than faking to try and get an album. Yeah. It, I mean, it, like, here's 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 something for you, like just a thought here because we're we're kind of we're of the school that we when when an album comes through for review we try and avoid doing online streams because of the quality issue mm -hmm. um as someone that spends you know a huge amount of time uh making sure that things simmed well do you think and obviously i don't want to get blacklisted like that <laughs> but um do, do, do you think there's a, a an impact there when it comes to people reviewing albums, if they're only getting it as a as a digital stream as opposed to actually receiving the the you know the, the files, even though MP3 suffers from the same same issues anyway, it's, it's not maybe as yeah. pernicious. I think that there are a couple of potential issues and some issues that aren't as much issues as they used to be. So I'll elaborate. Mm. So for one, file compression technology and the speed of the internet have, have, have improved like substantially. So, you know, you don't really need to send out 128 kilobyte per second MP3s for review. Mm -hmm. um, you can up that to 320 easily. And it, I mean, it takes me seconds to upload a folder of, of MP3s. Um, that being said, I think that every the digital age in general has kind of made us made our attention spans much shorter so mm -hmm. if you're reviewing an album and you're actually looking at the album and you know you're feeling the experience that the band intended with the album art and with the liner notes and the lyrics you know instead of scrolling through your instagram feed while listening to it in headphones and you know it, it's it's going to be a different result and i think the mm -hmm. review in my opinion, would be a lot more honest that way. Mm -hmm. I don't think that happens hardly at all these days. I think that almost all reviews are pretty much done based on advanced MP3s that are sent out. Mm -hmm. um, and I trust that the people reviewing them are listening to them and giving them their full attention and listening to the album as the album was intended to be listened to. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that I don't think that we can police or control. But it's just that, you know, if, if you review records and, and that's what you, well, that's your passion and that, that's what you do. And you have the ability to direct people either to or away a, a piece of art that a band has worked their asses off on. Mm -hmm. And you've got an, an advanced copy, please give them the respect of at least listening to it all the way through yeah. mm -hmm. and giving it an honest review and give it your attention. You know, don't, don't just, you know... Uh, you don't go to a restaurant and review the restaurant while you're eating the burrito walking down the street. Right? Like, <laughs> so, you know, give it, give it the, give it your attention and do, do it. The, the, you know, that's why you're in this business, you know, then there's a journalistic standard that has to be upheld there. Yeah. Right. Um, and again, I don't think that it's, there's any way to really police that from by, on, on, you know, I think that's the responsibility of the, the journalistic outlets, the online websites yeah. and, and stuff like that. Um, I do think that SoundCloud links pretty much have always sounded like shit. Yeah, <laughs> They've gotten better, but like, it's, I mean, it, it was kind of a, I think it was started as like just to share sounds, you know, just yeah. to like, oh, here's these birds chirping. Let's just share these birds. <laughs> so, um, you know, YouTube links are always like, they, they tend to sound pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. But like I said, like, uh, the algorithms and things have gotten a lot better these days. So you can have something streaming um, and really get a, a grasp of how it sounds. It's not going to ruin your experience of the record. Yeah. Yeah, you can judge a production pretty well these days with a stream and online and MP3. It's not mm -hmm. like 20 years ago and it's like, oh, yeah, this is definitely an MP3 because all those symbols sounds like bells. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the chirping, the reverb chirps. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Yep. Um, well, 
I don't want to take up uh, too much of your time, Brad, but um, thank you so much for um, for joining us on the podcast today. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, talking to you, and I-, I can't wait to hear more of your work in uh, 2022. Um, uh, we've, we're already starting, actually. We're recording a, a review later of an album that, um, that you mastered. Um, <laughs> so I imagine uh, your, your name will be uh, mentioned a lot in the next year. Um, thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate it. I can't tell you, like, I'm, I'm just lucky to, to be doing this and, and just to to have people from across the, the pond like ask me to do this is, is quite an honor. And, and so, you know, not just that, but anybody who asked me to work on their record, it's just I, I'm 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 honored. I, I when I like years ago, like me and my wife went on this whitewater rafting thing like in Washington. And it was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. But the guide, like we went down this waterfall and the guide was like, don't I have the best job in the world? And I just remember thinking like, fuck you. (laughs) You know, like I was like, nah, I'm going to take over. And so I do feel feel like I have the best job in the world and and I'm lucky. I'm very lucky. I'm fortunate to to do it. So thank you guys. I really, really do appreciate the opportunity. And uh, no problem. And what record are you reviewing later? Uh, Descent. Oh, from cool. uh, Australian yeah. band, yeah. Chunky yeah. as fuck is, uh, <laughs> is the word I used before yeah. we started recording. So, that was great. Yeah. I think Kurt missed that one. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. right, yeah. That's, yeah. That's the dream yeah, it's game. very <laughs> heavy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Yeah. Um, well, if, you're, if you're listening to this show, the podcast, or, or watching on YouTube and you're thinking... I have a new album that needs mastering, then get yourself over to audiosiege.com and uh, check out Brad, uh, check out the services um, available online. I'll put a link in the description uh, in our Spotify and YouTube and stuff so you can check out. Uh, But thanks very much, Brad. Much appreciated. Um, Hopefully we'll uh, be hearing lots of good stuff from you in in 2022. I promise you will. (laughs) 